Surely you've heard some songs made with samples. But you know what a sample is? In music, sampling is the reuse of a portion, the sample, of a sound recording in another recording. Samples may comprise rhythm, melody, speech, sounds, or entire bars of music, and may be layered, equalized, sped up or slowed down, repitched, looped, or otherwise manipulated. They are usually integrated using hardware, that we'll talk about it later, or software such as digital audio workstation. A process similar to sampling originated in the 1940s with music concrete, experimental music created by splicing and looping tape. Concrete music was developed by Pierre Schieffer a French composer. He used sounds from sources such as the human body, locomotives, and kitchen utensils. The method also involved tape loops, splicing lengths of tape end-to-end -end so a sound could be played indefinitely. Schieffer developed the phonogene, which played loops at 12 different pitches triggered by a keyboard. Composers including John Cage, Edgar Varus, Karheen Stockhausen and Iannis Xenarchus experimented with music concrete, and Bebe and Louis Barron used it to create the first totally electronic film soundtrack, for the 1956 science fiction film Forbidden Planet. Music concrete was brought to a mainstream audience by the BBC Radiophonic Workshop, which used these early sampling techniques to produce soundtracks for shows including Doctor Who. In the 1960s, Jamaican dub reggae producers such as King Tubby and Lee Scratch Perry began using pre-recorded samples of reggae rhythms to produce rhythm tracks, which were then DJed over. Jamaican immigrants introduced dub sampling techniques to American hip-hop music in the 1970s. British producer Brian Peter George St. John Lee Baptist Edila Salino, I'm sorry, I had to do it again, cited German musician Holger Zucke's experiments with dictaphones and shortwave radios as examples of early sampling. The mid-20th century saw the introduction of keyboard instruments that played back sounds recorded on tape, such as the Mellotron. The term sampling was coined in the late 1970s by the creators of the Fairlight CMI, an influential sampling synthesizer used in 1980s pop music. Initially, samplers were unaffordable for most musicians and could only play back short sounds. As technology improved, cheaper samplers with more memory emerged, such as the EMU emulator, Akai S950, and Akai MPC. Sampling has influenced all genres of music. It is a particularly important part of pop, hip-hop, and electronic music, equivalent to the importance of the guitar in rock. But there is a discussion that never ends about the legal use of sampled songs, in other words, they were copyrighted. The problem is whether to use a fragment of a song is to steal it or not. Now I'm going to read you what you should theoretically do. To legally use a sample, an artist must acquire legal permission from the copyright holder, a potentially lengthy and complex process known as clearance. Sampling without permission breaches the copyright of the original sound recording, of the composition and lyrics, and of the performances, such as a rhythm or guitar riff. The moral rights of the original artist may also be breached if they are not credited or object to the sampling. In some cases, sampling is protected under American fair use laws. Turtle singer Mark Vollman told the Los Angeles Times, Sampling is just a longer term for theft. Anybody who can honestly say sampling is some sort of creativity has never done anything creative. Since the 1991 lawsuit, samples on commercial recordings have typically been taken either from obscure recordings or cleared, an often expensive option only available to successful acts. According to The Guardian, sampling became risky business and a rich man's game, with record labels regularly checking if their musical property had been tea-leafed. For less successful artists, the legal implications of using samples pose obstacles, according to Fact. For a bedroom producer, clearing a sample can be nearly impossible, both financially and in terms of administration. The 1989 Beastie Boys album Paul's Boutique is composed almost entirely of samples, most of which were cleared easily and affordably, the clearance process would be much more expensive today. The Washington Post described the modern use of well-known samples, such as on records by Kanye West, as an act of conspicuous consumption similar to flaunting cars or jewelry. West has been sued several times over his use of samples. Some have accused the law of restricting creativity, while others argue it forces producers to innovate. Sampling can help popularize the sampled work, 
For example, the DC Iner track pen atop the Billboard Hot 100 after Wes sampled it on Father Stretch My Hands, Part 2. According to fact, early hip-hop sampling was burned by unspoken rules forbidding the sampling of recent records, reissues, other hip-hop records, or from non-vinyl sources, among other restrictions. These rules were relaxed as younger producers took over, for many producers today it is no longer a case of should I sample this but if can I get away with sampling this. Thus the ethics of sampling unraveled as the practice became ever more ubiquitous. Now speaking of a more current case in 2019, the European Court of Justice ruled that producers Moses Pelham and Martin Huss had illegally sampled a drum sequence from the 1977 Kraftwerk track Metal on Metal for the Sabrina Settler song Nermir. The court ruled that permission was required for recognizable samples, modified, unrecognizable samples could still be used without authorization. To circumvent legal problems, producers may recreate a recording rather than sample it. This requires only the publisher's permission, and gives the artist more freedom to alter constituent components such as separate guitar and drum tracks. My opinion is that if it is possible to ask the artist's permission, it should be done. I also think that it can be more original to take only a small fragment of the song and not all of it, since copying a whole song and putting a beat on it is not very creative or original. Finally, let's talk about the samplers, the instruments that are used to make samples. A sampler is an electronic or digital musical instrument which uses sound recordings, or samples, of real instrument sounds, a piano, guitar, trumpet, excerpts from recorded songs, a 5-second bass guitar riff from a funk song, or found sounds, sirens and ocean waves. The samples are loaded or recorded by the user or by a manufacturer. These sounds are then played back by means of the sampler program itself, a MIDI keyboard, sequencer or another triggering device, electronic drums, to perform or compose music. Because these samples are usually stored in digital memory, the information can be quickly accessed. A single sample may often be pitch shifted to different pitches to produce musical scales and chords. Often samplers offer filters, effects units, modulation via low frequency oscillation and other synthesizer like processes that allow the original sound to be modified in many different ways. Most samplers have multi timbrality capabilities they can play back different sounds simultaneously. Many are also polyphonic they are able to play more than one note at the same time. Prior to computer memory-based samplers, musicians used tape replay keyboards, which store recordings on analog tape. When a key is pressed the tape head contacts the moving tape and plays a sound. The Mellotron was the most notable model, used by a number of groups in the late 1960s and the 1970s. But such systems were expensive and heavy due to the multiple tape mechanisms involved, and the range of the instrument was limited to three octaves at the most. The earliest digital sampling was done on the EMS Musee system, developed by Peter Gregano, David Cocker L, and Peter Zinoviev at their London, Putney, Studio C 1969. The system ran on too many computers, digital equipment PDP-8s. These had a pair of fast DA and AD converters, 12,000 bytes of core memory, RAM, backed up by a hard drive of 32K and by tape storage, DEC tape. The first commercially available sampling synthesizer was the computer music Melodeon by Harry Mandel, 1976, while the first polyphonic digital sampling synthesizer was the Australian-produced Fairlight CMI, first available in 1979. Akai pioneered many processing techniques, such as crisp-fade looping and time stretch to shorten or lengthen samples without affecting pitch and vice versa. The Akai MPC-60, released in 1988, went on to become the most influential sampler in hip-hop music. Surely when you think of samplers, the famous Akai brand comes to mind. The Akai MPC models are the most remembered, but I want to give a little review to other brands and models. Today there are a lot of models of brands like Native Instruments, Pioneer, Korg, Roland among many others, but there is a manufacturer that is Teenage Engineering that has some very curious products such as pocket operators, which do incredible things at a very low price and very small size. 
They also have more expensive products like the Op1, which is a small and functional sampler. If you like digital better, there are also samplers like Motu Match 53, Tall Sampler, Archoria CMIB or the Steinberg HA Lion. Last but not least, if you don't have money to buy one, almost all DAWs come with one, otherwise, look on the internet and find out that there are very good and free options. Luckily nowadays we can do anything for free so there's no excuse. I think that's it, give a like if you like it and see you soon.